In the last Sailorama video, we sailed across the Tehuantepec, arrived at the southernmost port of Mexico, and began the demolition of the interior of Sailboat Rosa. We started this interior remodeling by ripping out the wood and fiberglass in the saloon, galley, and engine compartment. We've taken everything out. She's almost completely empty. We made time for a little taste of Chiapas chocolate. Finally, the engine came out and the mast came down so that we could work on the compression post and the mast step. I cleaned up the mast step area and prepared it to reinstall the aluminum plate. However, under the corrosion, I found after a little sanding that the aluminum plate was cracked, warped, and generally beyond saving. Man, this stuff is hard. G10 is a material created by layering fiberglass and epoxy and curing it under extreme pressure. We have been carrying around some thick offcuts of G10 for some time, and now it seemed like the perfect use as a new mass step and base to avoid the stainless steel slash aluminum corrosion problems in the future. But these are going to fit in here. One, two, lots of epoxy, and then this one is going to go on top. Two blocks are in the hole. Put the icing on the cake. Do you need a popsicle stick? Yeah. Around here, we like the friendly jumping spiders and not so much the ominous webs of the Black Widows setting up shop under the boat. Meanwhile, the industrious leafcutter ants helped us to keep our lunch area clean while slogging away at their own impossible tasks. Preparing Rosa for the next sailor, we also wanted to address the issue of the clogged up cockpit drains or scuppers. We would close the old holes up and make some new, wider, more direct ones. We decided that this would involve fabricating a tube, very similar to the rudder post tube, that we constructed the last time Rosa was out of the water. We found a discarded PVC pipe and sanded it down lightly so that the fiberglass would adhere to it properly. The key to this creation would be to make a tight wrap with zero air bubbles, which is why we rub the shaft persistently while rolling. And our neighbor came by to observe and lend a helping hand. Voila, we cut it in half and trimmed it to size for the two sides. It required some cutting and coaxing and sanding to fit the tube smoothly. Ooh. Stuck? Yeah. We also touched up and fared the area on the rudder, which we had previously sanded down to accommodate the old awkward drains. Mastil the yard dog, his name means mast. Mastil! Mastil! <laughs> Siesta time. Siesta time, yeah. Back inside the boat, there were tons of old holes from electrical wiring that I filled in with thickened epoxy and now needed to be smoothed and sanded. The original gel coat would not necessarily have to be removed completely in a lot of places, but it would need to be wire brushed to help the new paint adhere to it. Our trimaran neighbors were also working away on their boat, and they had been here almost a year. They had just finished up spray painting the exterior, and they would be soon remodeling the interior as well. Check out Sailing Less Plastic for their story. The demolition was complete, and the time had finally come to begin erecting the new interior. We traced some of the old wood pieces directly, while other surfaces would have to be carefully measured and reshaped. Got a mosquito hanging out of his mouth. We wanted the new benches and shelves to be super simple without drawers or components that can wear out or require miscellaneous metal parts like hinges or latches, which would be difficult to acquire here anyways. 
just simple cubby holes to start out. The local welder shop made a slick new bottom for the compression post and we screwed it into the new G10 base. Finally, the deck looked properly convex instead of concave, and the mast step was also now quite secure. We experimented with using some auto body filler, which is a two-part thickened polyester resin, to smooth out some areas needing some flattening and to create fillets wherever the verticals and horizontals meet. However, we decided pretty quickly that it could only be trusted in non-structural spots. Compared to the West System epoxy, polyester just is very weak. We created some homemade tools including a compass for transferring hull angles to the plywood. How are the mosquitoes going? Hey! Stop hitting me! At this point, with the heat and the bugs, the whole task was starting to feel very self-flagellating. What were we doing remodeling a boat that we would not get to enjoy the fruits of labor of? The floor, or cabin sole, was very tricky to reshape and epoxy down. However, the saloon berths and benches assembled quickly. First, we addressed the verticals. And then the horizontal supports. Primitive compass came in handy for getting all those odd angles. And the odd angles of the sailboat interior required us to leave some extra centimeters for shaving and snipping when fitting the final pieces. We made the initial cut for the storage bins with the multi-tool and opened them up after with the jigsaw. Again, we wanted to avoid stainless steel hinges and latches and things of that sort being in an isolated part of the world where marine hardware is not easy to find. The plywood was also not optimal around here. So we would have to prepare and coat it with generous amounts of epoxy. I sanded to prep the surface so that the coatings would adhere to it properly, cleaned with alcohol because we couldn't find acetone anywhere nearby. And then I only made one small batch of epoxy at a time because it set up quickly in this hot environment. The soft squeegee worked well to spread the epoxy evenly and quickly. We use thickened epoxy to create fillets in all the angles and corners for smooth transitions, and no cracks for small items or dampness to get stuck inside. At the same time that the beds and bins were coming together, we also started working on some new shelving and storage that would hold items much more securely. The shape of the beam of the boat presented some woodworking challenges. It was a matter of cutting shapes and trimming them down to fit the angles properly. We acquired Sailing Less Plastics old fuel tank, doubling Rosa's diesel capacity. The tank would require a cradle in the crawl space under the cockpit. 
This was also a challenging design, requiring a fair bit of shaping, problem solving, and trimming as you go. All the while, I was prepping surfaces for the new fiberglass epoxy and paint. We also began to build the new galley and engine compartment. There was hardly any bulkhead support in the engine area originally, which was something we wanted to bolster up as well. Another fun creature that we found living among the stored items under the boat. Oh, really? The babies eat her? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Each afternoon, the rain clouds would blow in from the mountains and either give us a nice lightning show or pass over us with a bit of rain. Today was another mast day. This time, our neighbors Penny and Bill's mast was going up. It is that you hold up for me there. It's like one thing. Robbie offered to tie the lines in such a way that they could be self-released when the task was done with the crane. The method worked perfectly so that no one would have to climb up the mast afterwards to release any ropes. However, the force day, we figured out, would have to be lengthened at some point if the mast were to have a proper rake. In any case, another successful mast standing back up. Woodwork assembly was almost coming to an end as we puzzle pieced and screwed together the galley area. Now it was all about trimming off those extra bits. smoothing out everything with thickened epoxy and making those fillets and joints. All this galley space was originally inaccessible and lacking shelving. The bottomless crevice where things would disappear into was now a useful fuel tank area. In the last two weeks of this project, we were in a special state of mind. Getting a little loopy without having a kitchen to cook in. There is very little video evidence of me painting the entire wood, fiberglass, and epoxy job with the surgical glossy white. We used the same local heavy-duty Comex one-part paint that we used to paint the anchor locker some months before. Seeing as the anchor locker was probably a best test of durability of paint, it had held up pretty well. The idea was to leave the new captain of Rosa with a blank canvas on which he could create whatever he pleased. We knew that still a lot of work remained, but that is the nature of an old boat. All throughout this project, I kept a fairly meticulous account of all the costs. Marina costs, our hotel costs, nuts and bolts, wood and fiberglass. Just to give you a rough idea, not including the cost of the engine overhaul, which would go on for quite some time after we departed, we came in right on our estimated budget of 3500 We also had a four-gallon jug of West System on board, which we carried with us from the States, which helped bring down the price of good quality epoxy for this project. And with such a tight timeline on budget, we were quite pleased with the results. Nothing fancy, but a whole lot more easy and comfortable, we hope. Cheers! Here's to making unused boats sailable, livable, and getting them out on the water again. <laughs> <laughs>